always knew that the Holocaust existed, but before I came to the museum, I had only ever learned about it in a more informal setting. A museum like the Holocaust Museum is really important. A museum like this really opens your eyes to the Holocaust. The museum itself is a gift. It's a gift where people can come and learn the truth and see for themselves and hear for themselves what has happened so that this cannot happen again. There was a big push for Holocaust learning, Holocaust education, and St. Louis was one of those in the forefront. These people who they don't even see as human anymore. We had one very strong group of people, Leo Wolf, myself, and Bill Kahn. And we wanted to see a Holocaust and Learning Center, but we didn't have any money to do that. The Federation was able to get a major donor in Sam Goldstein. And this place is not just a bridge to the history of what happened to the Jews, and not just a bridge to German history, but it's really a bridge to international history. And, and St. Louis needs more of that. The Holocaust Museum and Learning Center is proud to be a department of the Jewish Federation of St. Louis. And by the end of this year, we will have toured a half million people. From the very beginning, the idea was that the museum would convey both the history and the lessons of the Holocaust. Most of the people who come through this museum, World War II and the Holocaust is ancient history. 99% of the people that come to this museum are people of other faiths and traditions. So that was what kind of grabbed you the most was actual the pictures. What we try to do in terms of the mission of this organization is to really get people to think about the fact that one person can make a difference and to not stand idly by when you see social injustice occur. And because they learned a lesson here, they make a difference in their world. History repeats itself, and it's important to learn from mistakes, and it's important to look in the past and to make sure that it doesn't happen again. This museum, unlike some of the others, is specifically, it has to be St. Louis related. Everything in our archives has a St. Louis connection. A call was put out to survivors veterans, other witnesses who were involved in this history to come forward with artifacts, photographs, letters. There are materials coming in all the time, everything from a priceless shoe, Nazi propaganda items, to passports. It runs the whole range of things. We get about 30,000 students a year that come through the Holocaust Museum. And when they have the opportunity to hear from a Holocaust survivor, it really hits home and helps them understand more about what they learn through our main exhibit. Children learn a lot. They may not say anything, but they, in their hearts, they know. And they pass it on to their children. We heard a beautiful Holocaust survival story. And have you ever been attacked physically? It happened to me many times. That was the second one I've heard in my life, and you can learn something new each time, even though it's the same event. Today there are people who deny the Holocaust ever occurred. Several people were saying just how wonderful it was to be able to hear from a survivor, and we really are lucky for that because we're the last generation who will ever have that experience. The children should know what goes on. But they have nightmares when I went to sleep. Someone from Women's Division Federation asked me to speak, and I had never talked before an audience, and I said yes. I actually saw what happened. The garden is meant to be a space for reflection and solitude. The six benches represent the six million Jews who were murdered in the Holocaust, and the pavers are purchased and inscribed with a tribute to a loved one or a memorial message reminding us of those who have passed on. Docents play an important role with the museum as they give approximately 62,000 volunteer hours to tour more than 500 groups annually. These are people that, the, that volunteered for the job. German soldiers who volunteer to do the work because you got extra pay. We conduct quite a few lectures, conferences for educators. We give them the tools to enhance their Holocaust curriculum in the classroom, and we do it all for free. 
Through the Rubin and Gloria Feldman Family Education Institute, the museum has been able to forge new partnerships and strengthen existing ones to bring quality Holocaust education to our community. Soon after the museum opened, we determined that what we needed was a trunk program wherein teachers could use the trunks for a month at a time for free. We also have our art and writing contest. The goals and the mission of the art and writing contest are for us to reach as many students as possible around the St. Louis area. And it's just to educate them about what we do at the Holocaust Museum and to give them an avenue to express themselves either with the written word or through art. It's evident through their writing that their visit really has changed their life for the better. Another very important program for us is our Sunday afternoon film program. I'm a historian of modern Europe. I give regular lectures in their film series and introduce the film and lead a discussion afterwards. As a Holocaust survivor, I wanted to be able to reach as many people as possible. So I thought that if we have a film that we can show about the Holocaust, it would encounter a lot more people. Law enforcement and society uses the history of the Holocaust to help police understand why their role in society nowadays can be so acute. There's one department who had years of difficulty. The new chief brought the department through in its entirety within a three-month period. And he said, our discourtesy complaints dropped like a stone right after the program. The Marilyn and Arthur Gale Family Lecture allows us to bring in prominent scholars in the field of Holocaust study. I said, I, I think this is something we need to do in oral history. If we had somebody that wanted to speak, we asked them if they wanted to give a testimony. They wanted to talk. We've interviewed, on audio tape, it was 330. We have others. In 2006, the museum established a writing workshop for Holocaust survivors called The Memory Project. Under the guidance of Dr. Robert Hutchison, survivors developed writing skills while sharing their Holocaust memories and insights through prose and poetry. These writings are now on view on the museum's website, hmlc.org. Yom HaShoah is a community-wide commemoration featuring eyewitness accounts of the Holocaust from survivors and witnesses. People come from all parts of the community to join together to memorialize those who did not survive the Holocaust and to honor those who did. What we learned through the years was, yeah, telling the Holocaust story and the story of the Holocaust was great, but we had to be relevant with what was going on today. Educating today's youth about the horrific events of the Holocaust is more important now than ever. Just as you see some people today condemning other people and other groups. We're trying to bridge the gap with uh, an exhibit like Change Begins With Me, where they can take the uh, issues of uh, the lessons of the Holocaust and, and relate them to issues that they are now reading about today. The interactive really helps you see what's going on recently. It showed that although those events were more than 70 years ago, things like this are still happening and that our job isn't done. And all of these people or these groups have taken action against prejudice and discrimination. It's important to me that I have something to show that I'm not speaking just as a storyteller. I'm speaking of something that actually physically happened to me and my family you go away with a different feeling and a different thought, how are you going to use our teaching you the lessons to make the world a better place? Who are you going to impact? It shows that as a person, you're not an individual, but you're a global citizen. It's your responsibility to help others. I think it's so important to spread awareness about these things and it's really easy, especially for young people, to feel like things like the Holocaust don't matter anymore, that they're in the past, but anti-Semitism, racism, and all kinds of things like that, they still exist and it's so important to learn about them and have these conversations and I think that the Holocaust Museum really triggers that. 